Hey everybody, this is The Vibrant Kitchen and my name's Heidi Bennett. And today we're gonna look at just a few of the cookbooks that I've collected. I love collecting vintage cookbooks. And so um, I thought I'd just share a few of those cartoonist kayfabe style. I don't know if you watch that uh, YouTube channel, but they like to go through and check out different comic books that they love and different artists and kind of just share what they love. And so I thought I'd do that today with cookbooks. So I love mid-century design. Sunset Magazine, they had all sorts of cool how-to books. This one says Sunset's Barbecue Book, and it's actually about building barbecues, like in your backyard. So this is more of that kind of maker, um, you know, builder, do it yourself at home kind of a thing. And right away, like there's texture on this. There may have been a, a paper slip jacket, possibly, I'm not sure. But this, this faux wood grain, I mean, I love that detail. And then look at these awesome illustrations. How to build them, how to use them. And there's even this little like spot here for your finger to go to different spots, different sections. I love this charming little person going from building it to flipping burgers, making some sort of tasty marinade. <laughs> this little one has some hair. I love this jaunty um, mustache. Let's see when this was made. Published by Sunset Magazine, San Francisco, California. First printing, 1938. And so this is the third printing, 1941, with a copyright of 1939. So I guess not much change between that, those two. So obviously I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but I just thought I, I'd share with you some of these illustrations. And this is my dream life. Like I really want to have this opportunity someday in my backyard to be able to make one of these great grills. This is the, it says old time pit. So this is some of the history, various types. Just amazing. What a cool resource. There's one with a spit. What do you think of these? Is this the kind of thing you'd like to do in your backyard? There's plans like hand drawn plans on making all these barbecues, ovens, concrete, obviously brick. I know a lot of people have pizza ovens these days. Oh my gosh. And a few accessories and gadgets. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Absolutely delightful. And then of course, there's some recipes at the back. And our same illustration at the back. I absolutely love and treasure this book. Now here's something you'll find a lot in these cookbooks um, from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. They are, you know, put out by a brand. And then, of course, everything in the book is telling you how to use their brand of products. I especially was intrigued by this bird's eye one. Of course, bird's eye is still around. You can get frozen peas, frozen spinach, etc. This one I thought was interesting. Bird's eye cookbook, tempting recipes for good meals. Because they're touting all of their frozen products and what I noticed was that they at some point had fruits, vegetables, seafoods, poultry, and meats. And that this one is copyrighted 1941. So we're really sharing with this harried family. Here's the harried wife. She's breaking plates because her family, her husband's bringing in this amazing new frozen item that's going to save her time, save the family money. So it's this, you know, emphasis on economy. 
and speed. They go into detail about, you know, how it works, how they take something fresh and get it frozen and then bring it to you and so that you can make it at home. And I, I love seeing this old vintage packaging of like these frozen lima beans. And I mean, I honestly absolutely detest lima beans, so I'm never going to be looking at those lima bean recipes. But yeah, and then it's just recipe after recipe, adorable little illustrations. And then there's some really fun, colorful images as well, too. So I was just going to share a couple of those. Here's this, um, like I said, here's a frying chicken and it's in a box. So it's, you're taking that whole chicken and then parting it out and shoving it in the box and then shoving it in the freezer. It wouldn't be a 1940s or 1950s type of a recipe book if there wasn't some sort of jello recipe. I do like to, to look through the recipes too and see if there are things I can glean about taking something frozen and making it taste a little more fresh because it's certainly still convenient to have frozen foods. But mostly I'm just taking a peek into the history. So here's a little peek into 1940s cooking and frozen foods from bird's eye. Check out this beauty from the Pineapple Growers Association out of San Francisco. I don't see a copyright date so I'm gonna guess early 60s, late 50s. So this works uh, along with like that whole kind of tiki craze. On the side here it says, make again recipes inspired by canned pineapple. Make again. <laughs> I love this beautiful illustration here on the front. Polynesian adventures with canned pineapple. So it's really setting a tone with this tiki head. They're gonna teach you facts about pineapple, of course. And then, oh my gosh, yeah, this is looking, this is looking late 50s, early 60s. So, you know, think Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, or heck, maybe um, Mad Men. Lovecraft Country. I love all these shimmery colors and it looks like there's some flaked coconut on top of this. Um, and all these wonderful little, looks like they've used um, a shell, you know. Oh, to have the time to be able to display everything in these lovely vignettes and tablescapes. This is my dream. Peppy bean bake? I swear there's a peppy bean bake in like every single cookbook I've ever looked at in the 60s. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to make that in the future. So obviously there's a ton of recipes. There's, uh, you know, pairings with ham. There's desserts. Look at this beauty. Sherry pineapple tower salad. Calliope pineapple salad bowl. I love how playful, colorful, and how much it connects to this ideal of having leisure time and really being able to entertain with a flair. So there we go. Get your pineapple on. Okay, we gotta know what a peppy bean bake is. The flavor's reminiscent of old school Boston cookery. <laughs> so we've got one pound and four and a half ounce can of pineapple chunks three one pound cans of baked beans, half cup minced onion, one clove garlic, two tablespoons brown sugar, one teaspoon dry mustard, and three tablespoons bacon drippings. So yeah, it's like a Boston baked bean situation. I'm sure it's real sweet and syrupy too, but I bet it's hecka tasty. <laughs> So that's just a few of the booklets and books that I have. I'm curious, do you collect cookbooks? Vintage cookbooks to me are just a peek into our history, right? And they can um, tell us about like trends or um, needs or what we were going through, various different wars and such. And, um, you know, obviously there's food from all other 
places all over the world that have come into the melting pot of the U.S. too. So we'll definitely want to look at some of those cookbooks. And, you know, I love vibrant flavors here on the Vibrant Kitchen. So is there anything um, a vintage recipe you'd like me to try? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, my name's Heidi Bennett. This has been the Vibrant Kitchen.